Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you from Design Cuts. Now today we're going to be creating a cool vintage car poster in Photoshop, but we'll also be using Illustrator a little bit just to import some elements into our layout. So to start things off, let's go ahead and fire up Photoshop and we will set up our new document. The first thing we want to do over here is give our file a name. So I'm just going to call this vintage car poster. And let's make sure that the document is set to inches. I want to make this about 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall, which in the US is tabloid size, but this is a pretty standard poster size. For the resolution, let's make it 300 DPI. And for now, we can leave the color mode set to RGB. However, I should note that, you know, if this is an actual design that you plan on printing, you would instead want to use CMYK color. But for this, I'm just going to leave it set to this for now. Um, we can leave this set to 8-bit with a background contents of white, and then go ahead and click Create to make your new document. Now once you create your new document, you should basically just have one layer here that's filled with solid white, and you'll see that it's just called Background. So let's go ahead and double click on that background layer to unlock it, and we can just call this the same thing, Background in all caps. Now. We're going to be using, as I mentioned, some elements from the Eclectic Vintage Design Library, which contains tons of awesome vintage assets. Now, we're only going to be using a small handful of these today, just some different textures, vector elements, and one illustration of a vintage car for our poster. But the full bundle contains a large collection of you know, vintage fonts, uh, badge elements and logo creator kits, textures, and just so much cool stuff. That you guys will be able to use in your design projects. But for now, let's go ahead and open our freebie folder for this tutorial. And the first thing I want to do here is open up the old notebooks29.png file. All right, so before I open this, I'm just going to copy the name so that I can use it once I open this in Photoshop. So first things first here, I'm going to double click on the file name over here where it says layer zero and paste in that layer name and then go ahead and hold the control key and choose Convert to Smart Object from the menu. And we just want to convert this to a smart object so that we can resize it without any loss in quality. And if you guys have seen any of my other tutorial videos, you know that this is something that I like to do, just as kind of a standard practice. It's a good habit to get into, especially if you're going to be you know, resizing things. All right, so once this is in your document, I'm just going to move it over here so that I have the right page kind of you know, somewhere like this on my canvas. All right, you don't want to see the, the spine or the middle of the book. And I guess you could use the left side too, but for now I'm just going to keep the right because I like some of the texture here. Okay, so you now have the texture layer and your background layer. The next thing we're going to do is come down here to the adjustment layer icon all the way at the bottom of the layers palette. And let's choose hue saturation from the list. Now once that comes up in your properties panel, we just want to move the saturation slider all the way to the left to completely desaturate it. Now from here, let's come back down to the bottom of the Layers palette, click on the New Layer option, and then press U on the keyboard, the letter U. All right, and you'll see that when you do that, you actually have this tool selected in your toolbar. Currently, I have the Rounded Rectangle tool, which happens to be the one that I want, but for most of you guys, you may actually have the regular Rectangle tool selected instead. So if you want to toggle through those, all you have to do is click and hold on that tool and check and, and click on the rounded rectangle tool instead, or you could hold the shift key and tap U on the keyboard to scroll through them until you have the rounded rectangle tool. Now, once you have that, there's something that I want you guys to, to take notice of, and that's the radius option up here in the top toolbar. We're gonna change that from 10 pixels to about 50 pixels, and then let's come over here and click on the fill color in the top, and we're also going to change that, so to do that, I'm going to hold the command key and just click on this color picker icon that looks like a little color spectrum there. And then let's go ahead and type in the hex value D9CA23. All right, and that gives us this nice yellow color. Now, from here, what we want to do is not go all the way to the edge, but come in a little bit on the upper left hand corner and then click and drag your rectangle out. And we want to try to leave about an equal amount of space on all four sides just to give it a little bit of breathing room. All right, so somewhere about there looks pretty good. And we just want it so that we can still see some of our notebook texture behind this yellow frame. Now, once you've done that, I'm just gonna close the properties here, collapse that panel, double click on the rounded rectangle shape layer. 
and that will open your layer styles. Now once you're in this panel, click off the stroke option. And for here, we want to make sure that we're using the same color for our stroke. And this is a slightly different color. So let's go ahead and once again enter the value D9CA23, which we'll be using quite a bit throughout this tutorial. And then make sure that the size for your stroke is set to about 18 pixels and the position is set to outside. And then go ahead and click OK. All right. Now, what I want to do is double click on the rounded rectangle one text, and I'm just going to rename this yellow frame and then go ahead and press return to name that. Now, go ahead and create another new layer above that one. And then once again, press U on the keyboard. Now this time, let's go ahead and grab our regular rectangle shape tool. So again, if you remember, like I said before, hold the shift key and tap U a few times on the keyboard until you come back to that tool. And now come back up to the fill color here hold command and click on the color picker. And now we're going to change this to a different color. So this time for the hex value, let's enter 42423F, which is this dark gray color. Now, what we wanna do from here is click and drag just to create this rectangle shape, kind of across like the bottom half or a little bit less than half of the image. All right, and then what we can do is double click on rectangle one here in their layers palette and rename this layer gray box. From here, press Command J to duplicate the layer. Double click on the layer name and call this one red box because as you might have guessed, we're going to change it to red. Press Command T to do a free transform. Hold the shift key and then slide this up towards the top third or fourth of the image here. Now, once you've done that, press U once again on the keyboard, come back up here to the fill color, hold Command, click on the color picker. And this time, let's go ahead and change this to our red which is the hex value 9E1D41. Go ahead and press return. Now you can see that we've changed this to our red color. But what we want to do from here is not just have all of our lines going straight across because that's kind of boring. So let's make it a diagonal to create a more dynamic and interesting looking shape. Press Command T once again and do a free transform. Hold the control key and click on the shape. And now we're going to choose this option here that says distort. Now, once you've done that, all you have to do is click on this corner, the bottom right corner of the bounding box, and I'm going to hold the shift key and just move this up. All right, so it's just going to create this nice and interesting diagonal here just from that one corner. And once you've done that, go ahead and press return to apply the changes. Hold the shift key while you have your red box layer selected, and then select the gray box layer just below. Now what we're going to do from here is press Command or Control plus G on the keyboard to put them both into a new group folder. Double click the group one text. And now let's rename this layer or this group folder color strips. Okay. Now what we want to do is mask this so that we only see these boxes inside of our yellow frame. So the best way to do that is to hold the Command key and come over here and click on the layer thumbnail icon of the yellow frame layer while your color strips group folder is still highlighted in the layers palette. And you'll see that once you do that, it's activated a selection around the inside of this frame. So once you've done that and you see these marching ants around your selection, come down to the bottom of the layers palette and click on this icon that says add layer mask. And now you will only see those gray and red boxes inside of this shape. From here, make sure your color strips group folder is selected Hold the shift key and click on the background layer so that all of your layers are selected and then press command G once again to put all of these layers into a group folder. Double click on group one and now we can call this entire folder background. All right and from here be sure to go ahead and save your work by pressing command S before moving on. Now once you guys have saved your document let's go ahead and return to the freebies folder for this tutorial. And the next thing we want to do is come into the freebie folder here and we're going to open this mid-century car image that shows these two people in the red car. Now I'm just going to copy the name of the file and then open this up in Photoshop. Now let's double click on the layer zero text over here and paste in the file name. Hold the control key to reveal the drop down menu and choose convert to smart object. Now as you guys can see I've already gone ahead and silhouetted this image just so that you can see through the windows and I've taken out the background just to save you guys a little bit of time. All right, so let me just close a few of these other files here just to make some space. Now let's go ahead and move this somewhere around the center of our image here. 
and we want to crop it so that the car kind of spills over the sides of our frame. Now once we've done that and we've placed our car about here, maybe a little bit lower, we're going to hold the command key and click on the layer thumbnail icon for the car. Now once you've done that, you should see the marching ants around the car indicating your active selection. We're going to come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the create a new layer icon. Now once you've done that, come back over here to your toolbar on the left side of the interface and click on your foreground color. Now we're going to go ahead and enter the same yellow value that we used from earlier, which is D9CA23. Go ahead and hit return. And before we do anything else, we're going to come up here to the select menu, choose modify, and then click on expand. And let's go ahead and enter a value of 18 pixels. Now 18 pixels is the same value that we applied for the yellow stroke around our yellow frame. And so we're going to use that same value here because we want that outline to be the same thickness around the car. So once we've done that and you have this yellow as your foreground color, make sure that your new layer is selected while this selection is still active. And then all you have to do is press Alt Option and Delete on the keyboard and that's going to fill your selection with yellow. Press Command or Control plus D on the keyboard to deselect your selection and then press Command, Control and the left bracket to move that layer down one position in the layers palette. Now, all we're going to do from here is remove the bottom portion of this stroke because we want it to appear on the sides and we're gonna leave it on the top for a reason that you guys will see in just a little bit. But what we don't want is the stroke along the bottom of the car. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just zoom in here, press M on the keyboard to get my rectangular marquee tool and what I want to do is carefully kind of like click in here to try and line this up with the inside border of the yellow frame. And now I'm just going to click and drag and bring it over here to the right side. And again, try to line that side up as well. And then all I'm going to do is press delete on the keyboard to delete the inner part of that stroke along the bottom of the car. Now press command or control plus zero to zoom out and fit that to your screen. Okay, so at this point we can double click that layer and we can call it, you know, yellow line or yellow stroke, whatever you want, it's totally fine. And now what we're going to do is once again use the selection of that car. So select your mid-century car, smart object layer, hold the command key and click on this on the layer thumbnail icon and then go ahead and create another new layer. Now this time what we're going to do is fill this layer with black. So press D on the keyboard to get your default colors and then once again, the keyboard shortcut to fill a selection with your foreground color is Alt, Option, and Delete. Okay, so now that we've done that, press Command D to deselect it, or you can come up here to the Select menu and just choose Deselect. Now, after doing that, what we want to do is reduce the opacity of this layer to about 50%. So all you have to do is press the number 5 on the keyboard, and that will reduce the opacity. Now, what we want to do next is double click on this layer and we're going to check off the color overlay option. Let's go ahead and change the blend mode of this layer to normal, turn the opacity up to 100, and then for the fill color, let's enter a value of CECECE, -E -C -E -C -E, which is this light gray color. Then we'll go ahead and press return to apply that and press command and the left bracket to move that below your car. Now let's double click on the layer one text here in the layers palette and just rename this layer car shadow. Now all I'm going to do from here is move this layer down. I'm just going to hold the shift key and tap down a bunch of times and then let's move it over to the right. So once again, hold the shift key and just tap the right arrow until this kind of lines up over here. And if you look at the angle of the shadow on the car and the angle of the shadow that we just created, I'm trying to make it so that it follows this line here. Okay, and once you've done that, it should look something like this. So the next thing we're going to do here is just make sure that this selection stays contained within our yellow frame. So we're going to do what we did earlier. I'm going to expand the contents of the background folder, hold the command key, and click on the yellow frame layer thumbnail icon, collapse that folder, and now I can select the car shadow layer and apply a layer mask by clicking on this icon at the bottom of the layers palette. Now once I've done that, I will only see the shadow on the inner part of this frame. Once you've done that, you can select your car smart object layer, 
hold the shift key, select the yellow stroke layer on the bottom, and press command G to put those layers into a group folder. Double click the group one text and just rename this layer car. Now the next thing we're going to do is add our text. So add a new layer, which you can do by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette, or by using the keyboard shortcut command control plus alt option plus shift and the letter N on the keyboard. And then press the letter T to get your text tool or your type tool. Now, before we add our text, I just want to point out that you can still see the top of this shadow through the window here. So before we move on, we have to go back into our car folder. So we're going to click on the layer mask icon attached to our car shadow layer, press M on the keyboard to create a rectangular selection around that. And then once again, press Alt Option and Delete on the keyboard to fill that layer with black. And that's going to hide that shadow there. Then press Command D once again to deselect it. And that should take care of that. Now let's come back to our new layer just above that. Press Command and the left bracket to move it below the car layer. And then press T once again to get your type tool. Now I'm going to click the cursor in here and type out the words Venice Beach. All right, and Venice Beach is an awesome beach in California, for those of you guys who don't know. But let's go ahead and customize this text a little bit more. The first thing I'm going to do is click inside my text box here two or three times to highlight the text. And then I want to bring up my character panel, which I can get by going to the window menu and choosing character. Now, once I've done that, for this, I'm going to be using the typeface Futura and looking for a condensed bold version. So let me see here if I can just find a nice condensed bold version of Futura, which I happen to have. If you guys don't have this exact font, you can use any other condensed bold font, maybe Helvetica or something similar to that. Now, once you've done that, open up your character panel and notice over here in the point size, I'm going to change it from 10 to 212.09 point, which is pretty large. And in addition to that, I'm going to change the tracking setting from 380 to negative 40 and then press return. And then let's also go ahead and change the color while we're here. And I'm going to make this the same red color that we used for our box, our red box earlier, which was 9E1D41, and then press return. Now, I'm going to click on my move tool over here so that my text is no longer highlighted. And now I'm just going to slide this over. All right, I'm going to dock my character panel back here on the side so that I can get back to it later. And then press the space bar. And as I'm holding the space bar down, I can click and drag around my document. So now what I want to do is basically place my Venice Beach text behind the car. And you can see if I move it down here, you'll see it through the window, which is what we want, right? And you can see that stroke that's applied to the top of the car. But we now want to warp and distort our text a little bit. So before I do that, I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the Venice Beach text and convert it to a smart object. Because some of these options that we want to apply cannot be applied to regular live text. They can only be done to smart objects. So once you've done that, press Command T to apply a free transform, hold the control key and click on the text. And then we want to choose perspective. Now, once we choose perspective, all I'm going to do is hold the Alt option and shift keys and drag upwards on the top right corner of the bounding box. And that's going to make it look like the right side of the text is coming towards us. Now, before I apply that change and those transformation settings, I'm going to hold the control key and click once again, and this time choose distort. Now what we want to do is grab the top right corner of the bounding box and move this text up here, grab the bottom right one and try and line it up here so that it's in a straight line along the right edge. And we're going to now click on the upper left corner and try to line it up with the left edge of this red box here. Grab the bottom left corner, and now we just want to try to make it basically in a straight line along the left edge. Okay, something like that looks pretty good, and then go ahead and press return on the keyboard. Now after applying that change, there's one more thing that I want to do just to make the text a little bit shorter, because at the moment it's a little bit hard to read because you can't really see the bottom edges of some of these letters. So go ahead and press Command T once again, and now move your cursor over the middle part of the bounding box for your smart object here, and then just move this up a bit. All right, and the idea here is that we want to move it up just enough so that you can see the rest of these letters, maybe somewhere around there. 
Now from here, just go ahead and press return to apply the changes. So now I'll just press command G to put this into a group folder, copy the Venice Beach layer name, double click on the group one text in the layers palette and just paste that in so that this layer can also be in a group folder. Once again, be sure to save your file as you work. The next thing we want to look for here is our vector ribbon. So you'll see here we have the Java Heritage's ribbon and we've basically got it in a few different versions or EPS files here. Now I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC, but I've also saved it down as CS6, 5, 4, and EPS8. So whichever version of Illustrator you're using, be sure to open up that file so that it'll be compatible. Now once you've opened this file in Illustrator, you should have something that looks like this. And this is just one of the extras that comes in the full bundle. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is click and drag around this ribbon, press Command C to copy it, and then we can press Command W to close it and return to Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and press Command V and then choose Smart Object where it says Paste As and click OK. And that's just going to paste this ribbon into our document so that it's automatically a Smart Object by default. All right, and that'll basically just save us a step so that we don't need to convert it to a Smart Object once we bring it in here. Now, let's just move this up here towards the top and then hold the shift key and drag outwards a little bit from the bottom right hand corner of the bounding box just to make that a bit larger. All right, and then once you're happy with the size and placement, go ahead and press return on the keyboard. And now let's just go ahead and paste a name in here. We can paste in a layer name, you can call it anything you want. All right, but for now, I'm just going to use the same name as the file itself. The next thing I want to do is just double click on this layer, choose the color overlay option, click on this little fill box here, and then you can either manually type in the value for the yellow that we've been using, or if you just move your cursor outside of this color picker box, you'll see that your cursor turns into an eyedropper, so you can just automatically select the yellow from the background to get that value. Then just go ahead and click OK twice on the keyboard to apply those changes. Now we want to go ahead and create another new layer. Okay, and then we'll switch back to our type tool, click inside our canvas here, and this time we'll type out the word VISIT, all right, in all caps. Press Command A to select your text, and now I can open my character panel, which I docked before from the right side of my panels here. Okay, and this time I'm going to change this a bit. I'm going to change the size because it's way too big. So let's make it about 29 point and set the tracking from negative 40 to about 580. Okay, and for the fill color, I'm using the same red, but if you don't have this red, all you have to do is click inside the box, move your cursor outside of the color picker window, and sample some of that red color. All right, and then I'm just going to click on my move tool here over to the upper left hand corner of my interface, and then I'll press Command T and just move this over here on top of the ribbon. All right, now once you've done that, I'm gonna press T again to get my type tool and click two or three times inside the text to highlight it. Now once I've done that, I'm going to come up here to the top toolbar and choose this option that says create warped text. It looks like an angled T with a curved line beneath it. All right, and then once you do that, you can see that you have an option here called style. So go ahead and click where it says none and we're going to choose the option called rise. Now for the settings here, make sure that you have it set to horizontal with a bend of 50, or actually let's make it about 59. Let's set it to about 59 and then click OK. All right, now the angle for this is pretty good, but we'll need to switch the ribbon to go the other way. So I'm gonna select the ribbon layer, press Command T, and then hold the Control key and click on it and choose flip horizontal from the bottom here. Now press return to apply that change. We can just tap this down a little bit. Now we'll grab our text and just bump it up a little bit while holding the shift key. And we actually need to make it a little bit bigger. So go ahead and press command T. Now we can just scale this up a bit by holding shift and dragging outwards from the upper right hand corner of the bounding box. And now we can just kind of nudge it into place until it sits nicely in the center of the ribbon there. Now once you've done that, select your visit text layer, hold shift and select the vector ribbon, press command G to put it into a group folder, double click on group one, and then change this to yellow ribbon. Now from here, let's go ahead 
and press the space bar and then drag down towards the bottom of our document. Add another new layer, press T to get your type tool, and click inside of this large dark gray area. Now we're going to type out the word California in all uppercase letters. Press Command A to select all of the text. And this time, let's go ahead, and we can still use Futura, but I think instead of bold, I'm going to go with a medium weight. So it's a little bit lighter just to mix things up a bit. Now for the fill color, let's go ahead and change it from that dark red to the hex value DCDAD6, which is this very light gray color. For the size, we'll make it about 70 point, and we'll change the tracking or leave it at 580. Then I'm going to click on the Move tool, press Command-T, and just drag this over here into the center of my document. All right, and you can just kind of eyeball it here. I'm just going to tap it over a few times while holding the Shift key so that you end up with something like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create another new layer by using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control plus Alt Option plus Shift plus the letter N. Grab my Type tool once again by pressing T and click below the California text. Now this time I'm going to type out the following phrase, experience the most glorious beach on the coast. All right, and once you've done that, press Command A to select all, and then come back over here to your character panel. Now I'm going to click in here to change the typeface from Futura Condensed to a free script font called Sign Painter, or Sign Painter House Script. We're going to change the settings from 70 to about 43.5. And let's also go ahead and change the tracking because we don't want that much space between our letters. So maybe we can set that to 20 and see how that looks. Now there's one other thing here that I want to point out to you guys, and that's these two uppercase T's. That's making it all caps. So if I click on that, it'll change it back so that it appears to be all lowercase. Now I'm going to press Command T to do a free transform. Just move this over here so that it sits nicely below our text. And then let's press Return to apply the changes. Now I still want to make this a little bit smaller, I think. So I'm going to press Command T and then hold Alt Option and Shift and drag inwards from the bottom right corner just to scale this down so that the width matches roughly about the same width as our California text above it. Okay nudge it up a little bit, and then press T again to get your type tool. Click inside to highlight the entire line. Click on the color fill from the character panel. Move your cursor outside and sample that yellow color. So we now have our California text with this nice tagline below. From here, I'm going to move this layer down one place in the layers palette by pressing Command and the left bracket. Hold the Shift key and click on the California text, and then press Command G and rename this folder California. Now let's return to our freebie folder for a second to open up our next file. Now this time we're going to open up another cool vector element here from Java Heritages. And this one is going to be the vector badge. All right, so I'm just going to copy the layer name and open this in Illustrator. Now again, open up whichever version of the EPS file that is compatible with your version of Illustrator. And once you've done that, you can either click and drag around the shape or press Command A to select all, and then Command C to copy it, Command W to close the window, and then Command and the tab key until you come back over to Photoshop, and then press Command V to paste it, and make sure you paste it as a smart object and click OK. Now we're going to move this file beneath our California text and the tagline, and then hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and just scale it down a bit to about there. All right, go ahead and press return to apply the changes. And now let's just rename that layer with the file name. And then we can double click on the layer to bring up the layer style dialog box, check off the color overlay option, and you should automatically have this yellow fill color applied. Just check to make sure that it's the same D9CA23, which it is, and then go ahead and click OK to apply the changes. Now we want to center this with our text in the California group folder. So I'm just going to expand that for a second. Hold the command key and click on each of these layers inside. And then up here on the top toolbar, you'll see that you have this whole series of align tools. 
The one that we're concerned with is going to be the fifth one in from the left called Aligned Horizontal Centers. And that's just going to nudge it into place to make sure everything is lined up. Now let's go ahead and create another new layer, press T to get our type tool, and then click inside of this circle here on the badge and type out the letters CA. Now we're going to use the same Futura condensed medium font that we used before, but we want that same light gray color. So if you remember from before, the color that we used was DCDAD6, and then we can press return on the keyboard. And let's go ahead and change the size here to 45.85, and we can also set the tracking to 60 because we don't need it to be spaced out. Now click on the move tool just to deselect that, hold the shift key, and tap this over and down a bit so that it sits nicely in the center of that badge. Select the badge, press Command T, and then hold the Alt option and Shift keys, and drag inwards a bit just to make it a little smaller so that it fits a little bit more closely to the text. All right, and then you can position the text accordingly. Now, what we want to do from here is press Command J to duplicate our CA text, and now we're going to hold, press Command and T to do a free transform, and hold the Shift key and just move this over to the left. Press T to get your type tool and click inside. And then we're going to change this text to say since, S-I-N-C-E. Press Command A to select all of your text here. And this time, let's just go ahead and reduce the size of this text to about 25.48 point. And we're going to now increase the tracking setting to about 380 to space that out. Click on the Move tool, hold the Shift key and tap this up a little bit. And now we'll tap it in towards the right so that it sits nicely in the center here. Okay, press Command J to duplicate that layer and then hold the Shift key and hold down the right arrow to move it over here to the right side. And we're gonna change this to 1850 because according to, to myth, to legend, California was founded in 1850. Not settled, but I believe it was founded in that year. At least based on what I read, but we're gonna go with that for now. Okay, and then once you've done that, select your top text layer, hold the Shift key and select your badge, then press Command G to once again put that into a group folder, and we'll just rename this layer, or this folder, Badge. Now you can press Command Zero to fit your entire image into the window here, and we can go ahead and just close our character panel. So we can now begin to add a couple of cool gritty textures just to give this some age and make it look a little bit more worn and vintage feeling. So let's go back to our freebie folder for the tutorial. And we're going to now open up the old notebooks13.png file. All right, so we're gonna open this in Photoshop. Let's double click on the layer name and paste in a, a name here or call it anything you want. Hold the control key and choose convert to smart object. And now we can bring this into our document. Okay, I'm just gonna move it over a bit so I don't see that fold on the bottom. And what I'm going to do from here is change the blending mode from normal to multiply. Now, I wanna add a adjustment layer here because I don't want it to have this greenish tint. So while that layer is selected, hold the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. And then when the new layer dialog box pops up, check off this option that says use previous layer to create clipping mask and click okay. Over here in the properties, all we're gonna do is once again, move the saturation slider all the way to the left to desaturate it. And because we applied a clipping mask, it's only going to affect the layer directly below. Now, we can once again select our old Notebooks 13 Smart Object Texture Layer, come back down here to the Adjustment Layer icon, only this time we don't need to hold the Alt Option key to apply a clipping mask because whatever else we add, since we have this layer selected, will kind of be nested in between this and the original clipping mask layer that we applied before. So now we'll choose levels from the list. And all we're gonna do this time is move the right hand slider in towards the left until it's set to around 175. All right, and that's just going to lighten it up so it's not as dark. And you can see when I turn the visibility of that layer on and off, what's happening. All right, now let's add one more adjustment layer. So come back down here to the adjustment layer icon. And this time we'll choose solid color. Now for the value here, I wanna use my yellow color from before. So I'm going to type in the hex value D9CA23, press return on the keyboard, 
and I want to move this up two places in the layer stack because I don't want this to be desaturated. It has to be above the hue saturation adjustment layer. So to move this up two positions, all I'm going to do is press command and the right bracket key once and then one more time. And now you can see that it's above that layer. If I were to press it a third time, nothing would really happen because it would be all the way at the top. But sometimes this layer can come unclipped, in which case you would just have to move it back into place. So once you've done that, all I'm going to do now is reduce the opacity of this layer to 50 by pressing the number 5 on the keyboard and changing the blend mode from normal to screen. Now when I turn that on and off, you can see that it applied a little bit more lightness and a little bit of a, a tint to it just to make it look a little bit older. Okay, now let's go back to our freebie folder and add one more texture. This time we're going to add a texture from the Beacon collection which I'm once again going to open in Adobe Illustrator because it's a vector texture. And let's take a look at that. Now, once you have this file open, once again, press Command A to select all, Command C to copy it, Command W to close it, and then Command and Tab to come over back into Photoshop. And I'm just going to paste this into my main document here. Press Command V and then choose Smart Object and click OK. And then what we're going to do is scale this up so that it fills our entire image because by default, the texture is going to be pretty small. But thankfully, because it's a vector, we can scale it without having to worry about any loss in quality. All right, so I'm just going to scale it up, maybe zoom out a bit so I can see what I'm doing just to make sure that it fills the entire canvas and then press return on the keyboard to apply those changes. Now I'm just going to double click on the vector smart object text here to rename that layer. And then we can tweak some of these settings. So the first thing I want to do here is click on this fill option here, just above in the layers palette. And I'm going to move it all the way down to zero, which essentially is going to make this texture disappear. But what we want to do from here is double click on this to bring up the layer styles. And we can now check off the color overlay option. And what we want to do now is change the color from yellow to solid black. Click OK change the blend mode from normal to overlay, and then we're going to reduce the opacity of this layer to about 22%. That's just going to add this cool kind of halftone vector pattern or texture over the entire image. Now once you've done that, select your top layer, hold the shift key, and then click on the old notebooks 13.png smart object layer, press command G to put it into a group folder, and then we're just going to rename this folder top texture and there you have it guys, now we are done. This is our vintage car poster design that we've created from scratch in Photoshop using just a small handful of elements from the eclectic vintage design library. Now the full bundle of course contains hundreds of awesome fonts, textures, illustrations, all kinds of retro and vintage stuff that'll definitely help you guys step up the quality in your design work. So be sure to check that out, it's really a great value. And I hope that you guys have seen just how flexible some of these elements can be to create some really cool custom design work. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please leave a comment below. Let us know if you liked the tutorial and feel free to share any of your work with us, whether you guys are following along with this or applying some of these tips and tricks in your own way. Once again, this is Eric Vasquez here for Design Cuts. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.